All right, hey folks, I am using BlueStacks today. I'm gonna to do some MSL. I actually took the day off from work because I got my vaccine shot. I still have my little very sore arm. <coughs> I'm tired, I just woke up from another two hour nap. My cat is of course complaining because she wants food. Those that are long time watchers know that my cat likes to make encore appearances on occasion and will work for cat snacks. Come on, come on. And off she goes to get a cat snack. So I'm going to be doing PvP and reading. I have schoolwork. I say I took the day off from work. I'm going to be doing reading into Audacity chapters from my textbook so I can listen to them later or at least get exposure and doing some pre-reading for my classes coming up. People have any questions or want to see anything specific while I'm playing, give me a shout out. I am going to try to monitor my feed. Getting up daily stuff at the moment here. Grab some bonus social stones. Um, I've actually completed every one of these, so now everything I'm getting out of this is just chips and purchase per day. I've done the gold, I did the egg, I did the gleam, I did the heroic, I did the holy gleam. Oh, I guess I didn't do everything. I guess I could, I guess I could buy the Pinocchio, not that that matters. I'll have all enough chips again to reset in three days anyway, because I do lots of levels. Um, all right, so anyway, let's jump in here start with PvP. So this is, for those that haven't been playing PvP or MSL, this is every three weeks they do a, a, a event for PvP where your first Astromon slotted gets full SP and can use his ult immediately. The opposing team's backup Astromon comes in with full SP and on their turn can ult immediately unless you do something to stop it. So. Uh, at this level, people come in with Astromons that will kill you if you let them get their ult off. So you can't let them get their ult off, so you have to prevent it. My team is a denial team. I do not auto these fights. I do win these fights, though, in general. Also, because I'm mainly aiming to get points here, I'm only going to do fights if they're going to net me 10 bonus points, or 10, an increase of 10 points, or 15. So either 10 or 15. The 10s are always set. You see what you're going to get, except for their backup. The 15s are completely random. You never know what you're going to fight. So my team is a generalist team build. It's unique. Oh my god, my other cat just showed up. Come here. Come here. Come here. Come here. Oh my god, my other cat. She demands attention. She doesn't care that it is her. I'm going to go give her some catnip and hug her. Be right back. Come on. Even better, she wanted to go outside, so she'll be out there for a little bit. She knows how to open the door, so she'll come in whenever she wants to. All right, so the goal on my fights here is not to kill off, but to stun out two of their people, so they only have two people that can attack. I got three, bonus. The only one that attacked was their healer, which I will now make regret having attacked me. The light Yuki. I've been working on boosting her up. She's gotten pretty damn powerful. Let's see if I can put her to sleep. She is resistance broken, so I put her to sleep. Um, let's go ahead and try this like this, I think. We're going to go for damage plus saps, followed by a whole bunch of damage and shocks. There's her backup. Also, uh, by the way, light Yuki's generally are people's backup. Um, but this is how you deal with the light Yuki. Break the resistance, you put it to sleep with 100% guarantee for two turns. Unless they have 
amazing resistances, they do not survive that setup. And then I'm just going to trigger the rest of my guys because this fight's over. And that was, what, a four-turn victory? Three or four-turn victory based on that? So now we'll do the random. I'm Chopa. Okay. So the damage dealer is the sea star over here. So we're going to go ahead and shut down the sea star. This lady has a um, SP steel followed by an ult that gives them immunity, I think. I don't want that. So again, they only have their healer available to them. She doesn't do damage effectively. We'll just go ahead and smack her around. Actually, I might just be able to go ahead and do this. Didn't land the shot there. I'm just I'm trying these one at a time just to, all right, well, I'll just put her to sleep then. She wanted to take a nap after all. All right, so she over here, so let's hit points. Now, this attack will be a guaranteed crit on the sleeper, which kill that water Persephone off. Oh, it didn't, well, it's okay. Kill it off the sea star. Um, so I will put him to sleep. And now they have one person left, which is an SP stealer, which will take some of my SP, but the end, that just doesn't matter. Uh, we'll go ahead and go with the shock alts, followed by more shocks, followed by more damage, followed by more damage, followed by they have one person, two people left alive that are both shocked out. So this fight's also over. Again, like a four turn win. And my team is comprised of a four star, a five star, a four star, and a four star. The teams I'm fighting are all, um, with the exceptions of those C stars on these teams, they're all five star unit teams. Okay, so I'm gonna jump over to Dimensional Rift. I'm gonna do a reset. And then I'm going to do a hit up on this rift. So in theory, I should not die. In theory, if my work phone decided I was talking to Siri, but in theory, I should not die on these runs unless they kill off my dark flora over here on the left before I'm able to wipe out at least one or two of these guys. If they all focus on the dark flora, I'll have to restart the fight. Or, or if they do a crap ton of damage and focus on somebody else, that could happen too. That's why I have the light Mandragora here. She's here to make sure they try, I'm trying to make sure they concentrate on her. But that's not always possible. Yeah, see, I screwed up. I should have killed him off. I didn't, uh, and so I lost. So I'm actually going to give that up because I'm not going to... If I continue, I would end up fighting the boss, and I would not be able to kill the boss off because of the heal on the boss. So I need to make sure I focus down Burnout 1, preferably the guys that can throw saps in return at me, these guys, the red eye. sure I land the saps on the person who can actually take the damage. And this time I got my Cura ready with a shield, which is also very useful. Um, we'll throw, since I got the shield up, I don't have to burn that down right away, but that just died, so it's okay. I actually did three runs this morning and had no deaths. It's just a question of who they decide to focus on they focus on strictly the Honaheim or the Flora, it generally ends up badly for me.
but now with just two left, I can make sure that they focus solely on the Mandragora because she has the two turn taunt, which means they have to keep attacking her. And I'm saving the ults for the next the next fight. Hello, VV. All right, so this is where I was saving my ults for. So we're going to land the debuff to start with. Shields and, and saps. And then I'll let it auto this. The saps barrages will continue. That should be all of them dead at the end of this round. Yeah, the saps murdered them up perfectly. All right, so we're going to go with throwing saps on all these guys. I'm going to try focusing this guy over here on the left to get a bunch on him. So this guy is the one that's going to live the longest. So we'll taunt him off. This guy's dead. This guy's going to. If I get a couple more saps on him, he'll be dead too. Yeah, he'll be dead from the damage on this. And then we'll throw some damage over here to get the SP. So two of them should drop over dead in just a moment. Yep. And then. I get some saps on this guy. Oh, that's right, but he's taunted, so I have to worry about it as much. And then we'll just focus on hitting him a whole bunch to get some hit point shards out of him. Or souls, there's souls, but. All right, and then we'll light stuff up. And then I can just let this auto at this point. So I have the shield running. I have. The Honaheim ready to hit with her ult. He's taunted. They're saps. I got the shield back up again. Come here. Come on. Come on. Go get it. And that's how he dies. All right, so anyway, first turn, first one was an, generally an aberration. It's if they focus on one guy on the first map, it can be problematic for me. I got two dimensional shards out of that. You can get two and very, very rarely three shards out of those runs, but it is extremely rare to get that. All right, so I'm going to hit a refresh up here. Got 1149, they'd have to have 1244. Four might let me do 10 points. It will. So I'll do 10, and then I'll do the next one for another 10, and then I'll do the random for 15. So they have, uh, this is a five star team with the Odin, and then the other three or four star units. And three of them are out of commission. I throw the book at them. Um, I don't, you know, what? there's no reason not to throw this ult, so I'm just going to throw the ult also. better to use this than have her SP steal off of me and then I can't use that ult, so. All right, so this should be where I get rid of her and then I'll hit the replacement. There's a dark sea star. Get 
the replacement with a sleep. And so only the Odin, who's negligible, I mean, she's doing a good job for damage. Generally, the Odins don't do crap for damage. But she's actually concentrating on this one. I have one unit that's taken all the damage, and that Odin has just been focusing on her like a laser. Which is rather amusing and funny at the same time. Oh, went after somebody else. You broke your streak, Odin. You shouldn't have done that. Alright, I was going to do the next one also, and then the random. Hope that's not a dark Persephone. It is not. So there are some people with some really massive damage output teams. They're running dark Persephones. I have one team that was a dark Persephone in the leader role as a crit monster. Um, and it was all high output damage guys. I actually beat them with two of my guys left alive. But they they were definitely putting the beat down on me. sleep so she doesn't steal any more my my SP not hers Let's see what happens with this ult here all right so I did get the melting oh she's got a shield on the dark Fenrir that's not good because that could be very painful I don't know if I'm gonna be able to cut through the shield oh I did get through the shield but I didn't stun her yeah, <laughs> the Dark Fenrir, the, the people when they come out with shields like that, if you don't have the punch to break it and shut them down. Oh, she's got a lot of defense too on the Dark Fenrir. There goes the stun. She's got a hit point regen set on the Persephone, which... It's okay. I mean, it just takes it a couple more turns for me to take it out because now it's guaranteed crits from her, and I'm using an elemental advantage with the Wood Honaheim. The Wood Honaheim versus a Persephone fight. If the Persephone is put to sleep each time, the Honaheim is going to lose, or the Persephone is going to lose. The Honaheim is going to win. All right. So I did both of those. So now we're going to go to the random. You notice I'm not changing my team out either. This is, I'm. Uh, if I run into, and there are some teams out there that will still crush my team. Um, but at this point, they're usually in the, <laughs> the 19 or 2,000 something rankings or, or point value, whatever. They're much higher point level than what I'm running into while I'm trying to get my points up. And she stole my SP, you greedy, greedy lady. That's what happens to me when you steal my SP. I shock you out. You know, I don't think the Draca had a lot of hit points. And that is a confirmed. And as a Dark Persephone, I've, I mentioned the Dark Persephone is coming in. They hit, oh, she does not have a lot of hit points. She's all glass cannon. And now she's just all toast. That means she was done a massive amount of damage if she'd gotten that ult off. Which is why she obviously did not get her ult off because I brought her down. Alright, so we're going to bounce back over to the rift. We'll hit up the rift again. Maybe I'll get lucky and get another two shards.
Now I'm trying to figure if, if it's this, I probably should look if it's the wood sparkets that are the ones throwing the saps in return at me. They probably are. So the left spark it, not dead, but will be in just a moment. And the right spark is dead from saps. This, by the way, is the only one of these dimensional guys that you should bring a sapper to. The other ones basically have heavy resistances or outright ignore saps which means there is pointless to bring a sapper to them. But this one, absolutely need to bring a sapper because he's got so much hit point regen and massive amount of defense. You don't bring a sapper, you're just not going to win the fight. should be the end of this fight here, I think. Yep. That was the mini boss. All right, just because these guys can be annoying. Go ahead and toss the shield up. I'll get the SP back momentarily anyway. Throw the shield because I'm going to take two ults against me in a second and I don't want my guys to die. Or, all right, one ult. And because I don't do lots of damage, I can just hit him for lots of little shots to get SP balls out of him. I do not have a shield up though. This guy does throw seals. So generally, you want to come in here with this um, your shield so you don't get sealed off by him. It'll take two, two or three more turns to kill him, but I can just let my guys auto because they've got this at this point in the bag. See, unlike, <coughs> unlike with your healing gem sets, he heals before he takes sap damage. Healing gem sets, you take the sap damage and then you heal. So the saps here come into play after the heal is ticked. But you have enough saps, you melt through them. Again, he has no sap resistance. That's how you fight this guy is with sappers. I have a phone call. Who could be calling me? Hello? Hi, Kim. I am under the weather. I just got my vaccine yesterday. have my wallet with me right now because I'm laying in bed. Okay. Well, I can go ahead and bill it out to you. 
of bread you have to build for 13 weeks. So it's 250 per week, you said? Two, two, it's $2.56 a week. Okay. It's $33.38 for 13 weeks. So for three months. Right. Okay. Um, and does okay. it does it auto start billing after that? Um, well, I would have to take it. I mean, if you want to do it uh, auto bill pay, I would have to take it on a credit card, debit card, or prepaid card. No, I, my 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 question is, if I if I were to agree to it, would it attempt to auto bill me? Would I just receive another bill, and if I didn't pay it, it would cancel? How does how does that work at that point? Okay, so I'd receive notice through the mail at that point. Yes. Okay. Um, sure, for the two fifty per week for thirteen weeks, I'll do that. Okay, so I do need to let you know we are in a recorded line for quality and security, and I have it under Daniel D A N I E L Bloomberg B L U M B E R. Well, hold on, hold on, hold on. So you, you just read through all of those and there are pieces in there I don't agree to. Okay. So I, I do not agree to the premium subscription pieces of $9 a pop uh, for up to two times per month because that could then just shorten the subscription to like three weeks or I don't know, four weeks, five weeks if it was 18 
if they, if they did four premium things over two months, I would, that means I would get like four weeks worth of newspaper and two premium whatevers. So I'm, I don't agree with that. And also I don't agree to having them, uh, I don't mind Garnet sending me promotional emails, but I do not want Garnet partners sending me emails that I then have to unsubscribe from individually. So we'll do so we'll do that. Okay, but how but how do I know that they're issuing a premium addition to call them to tell them to take that to not do it? No, because you just place the order. Mm-hmm. I mean, one, like I said, I'm, I'm currently laying in bed, so I don't want to have to get up to write down a phone number or something to have to then call them shortly right after to do that. Okay, so I, I'm, unfortunately then based on that, and I do, I do appreciate you reading that to me, um, but based on that, I just, I don't, want to have to make that separate call and have to get up when well, I'm not feeling well to, um, okay. to be able to do that. Thank you. Goodbye. <laughs> All right. Poor Gainesville son. I would have actually agreed to it, but oh my gosh. So I'll talk about it for just a minute. Gainesville Sun is local news, local newspaper. They called and offered to give me the paper at like two dollars and fifty cents for a week's worth of paper, which isn't bad. I mean, that's less than fifty cents a newspaper, um, but with a couple of catches. First catch was I would have to agree to. Garnet selling my information to other entities who would then send me emails of offers and I'd have to cancel each one independently. So basically it was an, an opt not opt outable, um, except she was gonna let me opt out of that one um, by just not entering my email address so that wouldn't have happened. I get I get like 200 emails a day. So for people who think why why is that a problem? When you start getting 200 emails a day and you have to try clearing stuff out and you are continually opting out of crap, that's that's why that sort of thing becomes a problem fast. So, but she wasn't letting me take the email off of the offer, which would have fixed that one issue. But the other issue was, and, and she's reading the small print, they could have up to two special issues per month. And each special issue that they did per month, they could they would charge nine dollars for that special issue. Now, the way they did that was they would pull that nine dollars out of your remaining time left. So if I had thirty three dollars, thirty eight dollars, whatever worth of subscription, they would be like, okay, you had thirty eight dollars, so now you have twenty nine dollars left of subscription all right we did another one this month now you have 21 dollars worth of subscription the next month we did another one now you have 12 dollars left of subscription we did another one now you have three dollars means your subscription is done and then they could attempt to say okay here your subscription is over do you want to renew for the newspaper i'm not saying that they were going to do that that many specials i seriously doubt that they would but and so I was trying to opt out of that. I'm like, no, I don't want you to do subscri special subscriptions for me. Just give me the regular newspaper. But <laughs> that one I couldn't get out of because they're like, no, if you want to get out of that, you have to make a separate call and tell customer service you don't want your subscriptions. I'm not going to call customer service and tell them that I don't want subscriptions because I don't want to have to make a separate phone call. So anyway. So that got shot down.
Oh, the Derek Chauvin is not testifying at his own defense. Because his lawyers told him if you attempt to testify in your own defense, it's just going to end badly. So, he is not. We'll see how badly it ends it for him. I mean, to be clear, and, and they were talking about this this morning, one of the means by which the defense is trying to say that Derek Chauvin was not responsible for the death of George Floyd was by saying that, you know, even if Derek Chauvin was holding him down, it wasn't the police officer that killed him. It was the carbon monoxide from the car exhaust pipe that was next to him that killed him. So really, it was the car that killed him. Which is one of the most bullshit excuses I've ever heard. And I say this because I've gone to... Um, I was in the law enforcement academy and graduated from it and passed the certification test. If you're an officer, the moment you place somebody in custody, you are responsible for their well-being. The moment you place them in custody. So the moment he took George Floyd's rights away from him, by handcuffing him, he was responsible to ensure, and, and criminally, criminally he was responsible to ensure that George Floyd was safe and George Floyd did not incur any additional pain or suffering because George Floyd no longer had the ability to defend himself whatsoever. So in all regards, legally, the police officer was at fault for George Floyd's death. Murdering him or not, if he, if he, you know, if it was the exhaust pipe that killed him, that's a, that's still the police officer caused the death. That's at an absolute minimum manslaughter. But it should be more than that because he actually caused the death by holding him down, by cutting off the circulation, or holding him under an exhaust pipe. So the exhaust pipe killed him. Using the excuse that the people nearby caused him to be distracted, and so that's why Chauvin died. It wasn't the people's fault Chauvin died. Or Chauvin died. It, was, it wasn't people's fault George Floyd died. It was, it was the police officer's fault that he died. By the way, so this here team, this 1,346 point team, is not a team I want to fight. It's all dark, all high damage. And I've got two light mons, which are critical for my team to be able to win. That team will break my team. So I will not knowingly go against that team right there. I might randomly be thrown against them, um, but I won't knowingly go against them. Um, because I only have one point left right now prior to the next set coming in. Probably just going to do the random to get the 15. Because I'm trying to get... Once you're over 1,400 points, you get five um, PvP uh, credit points that you can use to turn in for stuff for wins. So I want to get to that so I can start getting those points accumulated a little bit faster. It's not a lot of bit faster, but it is a little bit faster. All right, got three of them locked out. <laughs> All their SP buddies are locked out. Oh, she's a Persephone with a stun set. She's got a goal in life. She wants to be a stun queen. The question is, am I going to kill? I did not kill her. Oh, I did kill her there. <laughs> it's like I didn't kill her to start with, and then I killed her. Um, I really do want to try breaking her shield. I don't know if I'm going to pull it off or not. Aha, I did break the shield, which means she did not get her ult off on me. I am getting ulted by some crap I don't want to keep getting hit by, though, which is... Um, let's see if we can shut her down. Nope, didn't shut her down. So I'll probably get... She's probably set up also with stun sets. Yep, absolutely. So this turn's just going to suck. At this point, I don't really think I can win this fight. Unless I make all resistances right here. Ah, I didn't actually get locked out. So we'll get rid of the Persephone. I still don't think I'm going to win this fight. I might be able to live long enough to force a draw. Depends on if I'm able to put to sleep a bunch of these guys.
All right, I did live long enough to force the draw. I went to hyper mode, they'll not be able to kill me off this turn, and I draw. Not what I wanted to have happen there, but better than the loss. Um, I will redo that fight and win it this time, because I will not let that come out. Um, let me do my free tickets for the day. Here, watch another game you should play. to a message. All right, so we'll re-hit that team. I'll make sure I have my light Yuki available to pop the shield and then just shut down the sea star when it shows up. The annoying part on this team was a lot of their people have. So she's running stun set, heal set, stun set also. So two stun sets there. So, I'm going to change who I go after to start with this time, because I know she has a stun set on her. I'm going to try to lock the Persephone down early, and then I'll just suck up the two shots from the other guys to start with. Maybe they won't both stun me. Oh, see that actually was a good round for me, because I can do this, and this, and this, and this, and this. Oh, I didn't get either of the stuns off. One just didn't trigger. All right, we'll see if I can shock their entire team out. There we go. Go ahead and use opposites. All right, so she is up to no good. I wonder if I can kill her or kill one of them with this attack. Oh. Well, at this point, I have to kill somebody because I need to get this. Oh crap! If I get the sea star, this is gonna be this is gonna be a lot like what happened last time. I think. Let's go ahead and see if I can just drop this girl off. Yep. If it's solely the sea star that's left. I'll win the fight. Oh, and because <laughs> my girl's alt triggered, <laughs> so my, you might wonder what happened there. My water gene, I did the super ascension on, and every other turn, she has an 80% chance to drain out 20% of the target's SP. She just got SP drained through her shield. So that's why her shield, her uh, SP dropped, and she never got to use her alt. Which is why she's now getting slapped around. I'm gonna throw the book at her to finish her. It was overkill, but she needed it. All right, I have to use another turn. I'm not gonna do that just yet. We're gonna go back here. We're going to do another Champions League. So I'm looking for low-level Champions people to hit because they're the easier ones to beat and just get a few. I'm not I'm not trying to get a lot of points here. It takes a long time to earn points in Champions League, and you can lose them very easily too. So my goal here is just to come in and get some points. I'll probably end up like 750 or something. I was down to like 670, and then people were challenging me and losing in their fights, and I got to 699, and I'm like, all right, fine, I'll get back over 700. All right, so this team I've got set up here. Um, I didn't even change, you'll notice that it's going to be rare that I change my teams around. Um, but I'm going to go after their Shocker, see if I can put her to sleep to start with. And because I did, she's a critted. She's got good defenses. I'll hit her some more. She survived. 
And I don't think they're going to break my shield. Oh, they did break the shield. They all went after my healer. Interesting. All right, that's fine. Your backup is, of course, a Yuki, which is fine. She was not strong enough to break my shield, which is going to be unfortunate for her. Because my Mihos do not take kindly to people trying to hit them. This is another shield based team in the initial slot to keep the debuffs away. Uh, go after his Coatl. Not a shock. He's got good resistances. He did not get whacked by either of my attempts, but it also, they didn't actually. There goes the shock. Take some SP from you this time. And again, denying them getting alts. Just you might notice a pattern. Um, my my teams are in general built around not letting people get alts on me. And she has a heal alt for the team, which I definitely don't want triggering, because that would negate all the damage I've been doing. They're all shocked, so I'll just use her ult for a little bit of healing. My team was scratched. Now they're not. And there's just the one person left alive, so there's no reason to throw a shield. Wow, he actually survived the full round of my guys pounding on him. You go, Super Yuki. here. I'll flip down and see what's down there. 1355. 1355 is worth fighting and it should be a relatively easy fight. My team is designed to pick on water units. That's why I've got the Wood Honheim, which by the way is one of the... I've seen maybe one other person doing a Wood Honheim focused team. One. But Wood Honaheim is one of the best five star units, I think, out there. Because the combination of the um, resist break followed by the saps, two turns, three sap attempt, is just such bad news for the enemy team. This is going to get rid of the sea star. Oh, it didn't actually get rid of the sea star. Well, this will get rid of the sea star and the healer. Look at that, it's a dark beetle. Hey there, dark beetle. Uh, we'll just go with the guaranteed sleep on you. And take the one hit from him. It's a painful hit, but that's why it won't hit me once. And we'll just throw a small book at you. That was your overdue fee. <laughs> Rank number 183 right now in PvP. That will continue to go up. Oh, I am actually winning. I'll, I'll point it out this next time. 
um, that I'm actually getting five points since I crested 1,200 um, five points per victory now for uh, rewards. So the stunner taking down one of the SP thieves, going to attempt to lock them down, wait for this to hit, and then trigger. Uh-oh, don't kill her, don't kill her, don't kill her, damn it. Oh, it's a sleeper. Well, let's see if I fall asleep. One person fell asleep. She did get me pretty good with that, too. She did a lot of damage, which means she's also a glass cannon. But now their entire team is falling apart. I've not seen somebody use the dark um, succubi as a glass cannon before. She did. She did actually pretty good damage. Um, I, I'm impressed by that. And if she's successful, she puts people to sleep. I actually, I still haven't gotten a dark succubi yet, so I am jealous. I do have a light, but not a dark. Excuse me. All right, so we're going to come back over here. My rewards currently here are 320. If I get over 750, I'll get 340. Um, rankings. I want to see the rankings. See, these are the rewards that you can get for um, PB. Are these clan rewards? Yeah, these are league rewards. So I've, I do the Gleam 150 every week. Always do the 150 every week. But then you can also build up to getting egg packages. You can get light dark, three to five, which I'll never buy that because it will tear your heart out and break it when you get like three light cosmos. And I've hatched eggs of these type before and gotten three light cosmos. So you're better off saving up for the guaranteed five star or if you're really, really saving up, you can save up to get a Holy Gleam. You should be earning two Holy Gleams a month. So I, I don't know why anyone would save up for that. The five star is the better purchase out of these. Don't ever, don't ever, ever buy these eggs. They're not worth it. They are not worth it. Um, and these Fortin, Fortiniums, whatever, buy those with clan points. Don't ever buy them with league points. Anyway, so let's see what other low-level people are here I can pick on. There's a level 52. I can pick on her. Just looking at the team prior to the fight. Oh, they got a Draca. This actually could be a competitive fight. Um, I will win the third one if I have to, if it goes to a third fight. Soy mu complicada. Whatever the heck that means. Something complicated, I guess. All right, so we start with shields. Try to put the sea star to sleep. Nope, which means we're just going to pound on the sea star some more then. She's got good crit resistance and defense. And resistance, because I didn't put her to sleep. But she did not actually land a crit on me. don't want to accidentally kill it and then have to deal with the fallout. So I'll hit her. Hit her pretty good too. Alright, let's see what we get here. Oh, there. Okay. Now I land the stuns. I don't want their backup person to show up yet, which is why I'm letting that trigger a little bit longer. Uh, Alright, I can recast my shield, kill off two of their guys, and see, that's what I'm talking about. That's their backup, it was a light Yuki. Crunch, crunch. She did break the shield. Unfortunately for her, that did not save the team. Because it was too late. The sand wraith had been fed. Don't feed the sand wraith. It's like the sandworm from Dune. Don't feed them. They'll eat your, they'll eat your village, they'll eat your town, they'll eat your units. Well, that 
wasn't very nice of them punching through me like that. landed his shock on my poor Yuki and the defense break over on my um, healer of course that means now they have to go after her which isn't necessarily the best for them to focus on her I actually do like the wood Huron so I do respect them for putting the wood Huron in there um, the my units just outclassed their team. That's, I mean, that's why I went after a lower level person. They just, as you gain levels, you are by default having to gain more money. As you gain more money, you are by default having better gems and better upgrades on your gems. And that makes a huge difference. And you can see I've got three, super, my, three of my four super ascended people on these fights. I have four super ascension people. Um, so I'm just not even using the fourth right now. She didn't get a very good super ascension skill. Uh, and I'm not going to re-roll it because that would just be silly. Just because if you re-roll the super ascension skill, you have to start all over again. Let's see what this guy has. He's got a super ascension unit. Yeah, that's, that's his freebie on there. So his tough team is the first one. Honestly, I should be able to beat this team. I'll do this fight, then I'll go back over to the other PvP mode. killed her in one hit. Well, I'm pretty sure this is wipeout time for their team. Oh, nope. The Persephone's got a sliver of health. There's a there's a tiny little spot of red up in there. Don't worry, I fixed that for you. It's a Kiki. That's awesome. They've got a Kiki as their backup unit. She's a great unit. Not necessarily for these PvP clan fights, but she is a fun unit on a visual basis. Because she's got a dog mop and she's a cat girl. And what's not to love about that? for the rest of this fight. Let me just to check so my cat walked in the house. Alright, cat did not walk back in the house by herself. Awesome. Yes, 
sneeze, my phone beeped. All right, so refresh here. Thirteen twenty-five. Don't think that's yeah, that's not going to give me nine points. Is not enough points. That's six less points for a ticket. So the better goal is to go for the fifteen five. So this team is going to focus on nixing their stunner and nixing their damage dealer. I don't mind taking the SP hit for the one turn from the um, Dark Yuki. Although, she actually did really respectable damage, so I'm going to try to break her shield. Now oh, that might have been a bit of a waste, but it's all right. Go ahead and hit everybody for some more damages. Although I think I might have just killed the Dark Yuki by mistake there a little early. Yep. Wow. Wow. That's that is a dark Persephone right there. She wiped out my entire team. There's the two turns done. Yeah, that's that was a mistake on my part. I didn't expect a dark Persephone to pop out. Didn't expect it. Got nailed by it. Won't let that happen again. When my Honaheim dies, she gives the rest of my team um, Honaheim dies, she gives the rest of my team defense to the fallen, they take reduced damage. When my Light Yuki dies, she gives my team 40% health back. So <laughs> it's it's a fun combination where I get a whole bunch of health back and I'm much less likely to get injured. Yeah, it's just this Yuki is a, much more of a glass cannon than I would have expected her to be. But that's beneficial because I just shocked her out. And so she has no, basically her shield is for her resistance. And there is Dark Persephone, which is also the glass cannon, which is how she threw so much damage at me. And my light Yuki says, vengeance for the fallen. And then I have to throw the book at the water Persephone, who's still alive. I have to charge her more for making gems. Oh, my arm is so sore. I got it. <laughs> when they asked, which arm do you want to get the shot in? I'm like, uh, which one do I lay on? This one. Give me the shot in the other arm. <laughs> Because I don't want to lay on the arm that I get the shot in, because that would just suck. Uh, not a refresh available there yet. You know, I haven't completed the ninja dungeon yet, because I just hadn't had a reason to complete it yet. So we'll go ahead and hit up this. I've done all the other ones, I've just been lazy. I've got so many ninjas that I didn't have a reason to go in and fight ninjas. Her family was buried. I looked for someone to take the child, but they'd never take it. She tried cleaning up the house. 
And then she smiled. And then I realized I had to protect her. And we became family. And then I would feed her. I think she was more like Stockholm Syndrome at this point. It's really where this story's going. Oh, her name must have been Sarah. All right, what's this laptop spinning around doing? I mean, go through my emails, delete stuff. He doesn't feel at ease. Have you ever traveled to the past? Back time one day before his own death. He died after he came back and the dragon had already killed this girl. The goddess would never allow such a thing. Well, we can't leave that storyline without finding out what happens next. We'll go back to the hero dungeon and we'll find out the next story piece. What happened to the little girl? What happened to him? Why were they both dead? How did he come back to life? We must know these answers. He lost control and charged towards the dragon, because that's what ninjas should do. He was engulfed by dragon's flames. At the moment he was about to die, suddenly went back in time to the day before. Oh, it's Groundhog Day. That's not possible. Hmm. <laughs> Human masters are quite snobby. So he wants a master to protect his daughter, adopted daughter. checking. Uh, there's a new game out called uh, Game Figure Story that I pre-registered for. You basically, you have little game figures. There's a game. Uh, anyway, it looks cute, so I registered for it. It says I can download it now, so let me see what happens if I go there to tell it I want to download the game. Download. Scan to download. I 
First, I thought about asking the Omnio Mage for Shikigami could react much faster than I or anyone to a threat. If I give them the line of thought almost immediately, oh why? Because I don't want to be in anyone's debt, and because Omnio is that person who would agree to protect you and then be really annoying about it. Tired once as her bodyguard, the pay was just too good to pass up, but it was exhausting. It took energy from me that I didn't even have. She would flat out call me an idiot and suddenly pet me on the head. This makes me want to hear more. What sort of relationship do you two have? None. Whoa, he said that with no hesitation. Now we're talking about Omnyoji, though. Sarah, do you think we'd be able to find her like this, suddenly popping up and saying she'll join us if we pass her test? Never certain we'd ever encounter like this certain astronauts that only appear during the Heroes Festival, huh? What, huh? What did I say? I realized there's only more than 90 of my trials to pass. I hope you're ready. It wouldn't be too hard for you. Okay, whatever. Okay, so Omnyoji will not be coming here, is what they just said in a meta in a meta moment. It's only in traditional Chinese, though. Well, oh, nice. The game looks like a lot of fun, but if it's only in Chinese, I don't read Chinese, so that's just not going to work out. <laughs> mm. Yep, no more ex entrances there today, which is fine. that team reading the emails. So the sea star is feeling extra protective, are we? Well, let's see if we can break her with the Yuki's attack. Yep. So 
See, even if I don't have alts the second turn, I can still lock their entire team down. And it's not going to get any better for them after that either. Question is, I gotta make sure I have, because they probably have a glass cannon that's gonna pop up if I kill somebody outright. Uh, I need to make sure I don't kill them outright just yet. Go ahead and refresh the debuff there. We'll hit her again, or I guess we'll hit him. It's on this turn. I'm just gonna go ahead and polish this guy off right now with just the regular attack. And it's a sea star. Go figure. Go figure. The SPs or the saps make it more likely that my stuns trigger as well. So extra debuffs on them. And they're all <laughs> splat city is what they are at this point. Oh, he actually had the fallen thingy too. Nice. He got the booze from the death. Well. Still has six saps on the city star. <laughs> and that's that fight. cat. She has come in from the outside. Where did I put your food container? I don't know where I put your food container, but fine. I'll be right back. Oh, found it though. That was that guy. It was. So we can go after here. So this is an outright all SP team. All theft SP team, which is fine. Probably should have gone after a different target with that, but that's all right too. Oh, and it's an all SP theft team that only has one person active now. So go for a shock. This should not kill anybody. That was successful and that it did not. Just go ahead and hit her. All right, so let's see if I can just get. Oh, crap. Well, I was intending to use her alt and failed on the click, apparently. So, let's see what happens with this. If I land crit somewhere. 
Well, this is just going to suck. Um, now I just should make sure I don't kill them, which means they're going to take my SP away, which is why this is going to suck. Yeah, see, they took my SP, the little jerks. So we'll just get rid of her this time, because I failed to last time. Oh, she's a glass cannon, too. Oh, yeah. oh my gosh, she wants drugs, not food. Drugs, huh? There's a cat that loves her catnip. Oh, I'm starting to get a nice headache. Might be from the weather or the vaccine. The arm's still super sore from both. Well, the vaccine. I doesn't generally get sore from weather. All right, so 30 seconds for the refresh there. Now let's take a look at the refresh on the other one too, since I can. Who over here can I pick on level 42 and a 45? That would answer my question right there. She looks so cute with the little bunny. Someone has the bunny outfit on the sea star. You don't see that very often. That's awesome, though.
That was not very nice of her shocking me though. sand wraith. If you let the sand wraith get some turns in, it is going to crush some crap. It's just what the sand wraith does. Cherry is a healer. Now she is less of a healer. And no ult for you, Miss Miho. I like your outfit too. Very good try, Miho. Very good try. I salute your effort. Okay, so I can do this team, which I've already bought and beaten. I can do this team. Both going to give me 10, 20, 35 more points. So I'm sure we'll do this setup. All right, so let's count how many turns it takes to beat these teams. So turn one. Not counting how long it takes, I'm just counting the turns. This is turn one. I have all four of them shocked out. Probably not a good sign for them to have all four shocked out right now. This is turn two. This is turn three, so let them auto the attack because they're just going to take a whole shit ton of damage right now. Three turns. That was so bad for their team. <laughs> the three turn smackdown. I'm sorry. It just, it was bad. I've got your food right here. Come here. Come here. Come on. Go on. That's your food. Here. Here. I'm going to show you guys Papaya. She's the one who keeps coming over and begging for food and catnip because she likes her drugs. Don't you? This is also the one that at 5 a.m. this morning puked out a giant hairball on top of our bed. And all over Coco's earplugs, my wife's earplugs, just puked all over the place. Didn't you? You did. And then ran in the bathroom and continued puking. Yeah, it would have been better if you just puked in the bathroom, not on us. Well, not on the bed. Yeah, she feels really bad about it, though. Come on. Or not. All right, so... 
we're going to go after the SP there, and we're going to go after this two-turn stunner, because there's no way, if he's bringing this guy to this fight, that that's not a two-turn stunner. We're going to try to make sure I shut him down. So he is shut down. And I would have triggered on all of them if I could have. And the Persephone does have a heal gem set running, which is fine. And so does the Yuki. So both of them have um, specialty gem sets. The Yuki's got a, sorry, the Yuki's got a stun gem set running. And I know this because she stunned my Yuki with it. Let's see what I can do with this here. So I want to kill off the fire Arthur if I can with this attack. I did. And I said Dark Nihel. Look at that. I don't see them coming in too often as backups. They can do some good damage because they got the hit points for it. I would like to thank him for volunteering to give me somebody that felt safe to do that with. to the Persephone. Alright, so I'm going to do one more PvP fight. This random at the top, and then I'm going to take a wrap for the broadcasting. I wasn't able to turn my auto off fast enough. I tried, but couldn't do it. So, first turn, accidental auto. I don't think I'm going to kill anybody with these shots, so let's go ahead and drop them. Um, the saps might kill the healer, which means they're going to get somebody to pop in. Yep, who came in? Oh, look at that. A banshee came in. That's not very common to see a banshee pop up. But my Yuki died because they defense busted me. But she gave me heals as a result of her death. It's going to make this fight a lot more drawn out as a result. Oh, a lot more drawn out because I'm going to have to force a draw, I think. Because they're going to get all their health back. And start shutting them down. It's just depends on what happens. So these, oh, there goes that unit. I'm not sure I'll be able to force a draw at this point either. Taking too much damage too fast. And the Honaheim didn't die first, so I didn't get the protection of the Fallen on my other units. So I'm going to blame the accidental auto on the first round of that fight because that happened because I couldn't break out of it. So, oops. And then I'll go back in and do the fight the way I should have in the first place.
I should be okay. Well, it's to hurt them, but not kill them. And the, the water um, Fenrir has a heal stone set, which is fine. All right, so this should kill off the rightmost units. So let me get her brought up. Toss this. And then I sap them all, and I go for the stuns again. Yeah, see, when I actually control my units combat, it tends to go better. All right, well, anyway, thanks for watching, folks. You guys all take care. I'm out for now. Oh, if you didn't get your COVID shots, go get your COVID shots. See, I'm ranked 111 now. All right, bye, folks.